We all know and love tools like ChatGPT, but what if ChatGPT could run itself and take even more work off your plate? Well, good news. That's reality thanks to OpenAI's new Agent Builder. This is a tool that brings the power of AI agents, AI tools that can run other AI tools right to your desktop and right in the tool that you already use. If this sounds too good to be true, it's not. I'm going to show you step by step how to build an agent in OpenAI's Agent Builder right now. And don't worry, you won't have to write a single line of code because ChatGPT is going to help us build itself. If you're as excited as I am, let's get rolling. So first of all, if you're not familiar, what is an AI agent? Think about it as a digital analyst. It can reason, decide, and act. This means it can take steps on its own without you having to continuously prompt it. It understands context and goals instead of an individual task. AI agents can read data, they can analyze patterns, and they can generate their own outputs. And most importantly, an AI agent can run and manage other AI tools. Instead of you prompting ChatGPT to get an answer back to then prompt it again, it can handle all of those steps for you. So let me show you an example of an AI agent. This is what we're gonna build step by step, but I want you to see the entire vision and then we're gonna break this down piece by piece. This AI agent is designed to answer user questions and to answer user questions specifically for operations teams differently than finance team. It's going to go to real live data. It's going to go to operational data if it's given an operational question, and it's going to go to the financial and general ledger data if it's given a finance question. Even better, it's going to analyze this data with Python and give us really solid outputs. So if you don't have time to work on strategic work because you're answering so many questions from your business partners, think about this as the first stop, the first analyst they can go to for their initial questions while you work on the bigger strategic questions that really need a human's time and attention. So keep this in mind as we move forward. Again, we're gonna start working through this step by step, but this is the vision of what we're hoping to build. An AI agent that can analyze its own data, that can send it to other AI tools to analyze the data and to come back with natural language responses that should answer a lot of the question. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I've got the link down in the description for you, and when you sign up, I'll send you a guide to 15 five-minute finance automations that you can put in place today. So make sure to click that link down in the description and join Finance Automation Insider for tips, tricks, and hacks just like this. So to get started, you're going to need to go to platform.openai.com. You're not going to go to your regular chat GPT. And you're going to come to a screen that looks something like this. If it doesn't open there, make sure to go down to the left side and come to Agent Builder. And this is where you're going to see the ability to create workflows. And in this case, workflows are where we're going to build our AI agents. My entire workflow that we're going to build is an AI agent in itself using other AI agents. Workflows can do different things without using the AI agents, but for all intents and purposes, workflow in this case is the same really as an AI agent. So let's go ahead and hit the Create button. So you'll see here, this is the canvas. This is where you saw that full AI agent workflow published before, and it's always gonna have start. This is what's going to trigger the AI agent based on a chat give it. Now to orient you to what you see going on here again, this is the canvas where we're gonna build our workflow. You can kind of drag around with the pan button here. This will let you drag, clicker will let you click, and then of course there's undo and redo. Now on the left side, this is where you're gonna have all the kind of different modules that we're gonna put into the workflow. An agent, this is when you can actually call a model and it's gonna run instructions for you. End point means that you can end the sequence if a desired action doesn't meet a condition, if it's just the end of the the sequence. Notes are very helpful to allow us to explain what's going on. You saw some of those in the completed workflow. File search is a great way to add context from data or from other files. You can pull in data you want to have an analyze like point of sale data or general ledger data. You can pull in policy documents, whatever you need, you can pull that in here. Guardrails is a really important tool, especially in finance. We'll look at this, lets you make sure that you're not giving out personally identifiable information, that you're not doing things that need to be moderated. Model context protocol tools. Tools. These are things where you can actually go out to like Google Drive, Gmail, email account. This lets you pull in context from your existing work, from your existing documents to better inform the responses. 
We have some logical conditions, if else, very similar to what you do in Excel. Well, this lets it loop if a condition is true, so it'll run a process multiple times. User approval is a cool one, sometimes referred to as human in the loop. This means that if a certain path is followed, the tool will pause and ask human for input before it continues. It's a great way to make sure that the AI tool is doing what it's best at, but not making any decisions it shouldn't be. Then lastly, if we're working with data, you have the ability to transform data right in here, right in line, and set states. So if something has been predetermined or is being determined by the AI agent, you can set that state apply to the rest of it. Have any questions? so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comment. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. Now, the best way to learn is playing around, so don't worry about remembering all these pieces right now. We're going to start our build out and take you through a lot of these functions one at a time. So as we get started, let's go ahead and go up here and call this our data analysis. This will be our data analysis agent, and this will be our tutorial. All right, so we'll go ahead and rename that. And again, we're going to have our start here, and that's going to be where our initial chat prompt comes in. So our start is auto-populated. You'll see it's input as text. This means it's going to take it in like a chat, just like you would with ChatGPT. And now we can start adding all of the different pieces. So the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add guardrails. To add a module, you simply drag it out here, and then we can connect them together with the two dots. There we go. Now we can come up and set our guardrails. So what I want to make sure is that the chat isn't giving or asking for any person identifiable information, and I also want it to be moderated, meaning that if there's any questions that shouldn't be asking anything inappropriate, it's going to stop that from moving. Very good to always think about security and guardrails as you build AI tools. If it fails the guardrail, if it fails the moderation, I want this to end. So this is an example of where we'll use end. If it doesn't pass the guardrails, I want it to go back to the user and say, I can't move forward. But if it passes moderation, we're going to move on to our next step. And in our next step, we want to select the domain. We want to decide, is this a financial question or an operating question? Because we're going to want to talk back to the user differently, depending on if it's operating or financial. And we're going to want to use different data sets and different AI. So this is going to be our first AI agent we're going to bring in. We're going to pull an agent in here. We're going to connect them like this, keep it a little bit organized. All right, and then this agent, we now need to give it a job. So you'll see we have the name here. We're going to call this agent the select domain because we want to select the domain of the question. We want to include chat history. You will almost always want to do this. This is going to pull in prior conversations that it's had with the user. We want to use the GPT-5 model. We'll give this a little bit of reasoning effort just to make sure that it's really thinking about and selecting the domain. We don't need a tool on this, and we do want it to output in tech. Now, for the instruction, this is where we can turn to ChatGPT. So now we've come over to ChatGPT, and this is where I say you don't need to know how to cut. You don't need to know how these AI agents work in detail, because ChatGPT will help you every step of the way. So I've got a prompt in here that says, I need your help writing instructions for an AI agent I am inserting into OpenAI Agent Builder. I need this agent to analyze a user's question and determine if it's an operational question, a financial question, or something else. I want you to choose exactly one and output operations, finance, or other. Include any other instructions the agent may need to provide the best direction, because who knows ChatGPT better than ChatGPT? So we'll send that away and we'll see what we get back. All right, so it's coming back with our prompt. It's saying exactly paste this in as the instructions. All right, so we're going to select all of this information here. It's saying, so I want to output operations, finance, or other. Do not explain anything else. Don't add any punctuation. Classify it as operations if it's about processes, workflows, finances, financial statements. This is really great if it's chit chat, HR marketing. Just say I queue it. So we're going to copy this over. We're going to paste this in as our instructions. All right, and then there we are good to go. Now, we need to set a condition that's going to split based on what it received. For your background, if you're familiar with what JSON is, all of this is going to be output into a JSON format, which allows it to run through different conditions. JSON is an object-based coding language that is typically how a lot of AI agents will work. ChatGPT will help you write all of that. The agent builder will help you handle that. If you're interested in learning more about JSON, let me know down in the comments, and I can do a whole video on it. But know that ChatGPT, again, will handle all of this for you. So now we're going to come in, we're going to add our if else, and this is going to be our condition that allows us to split. Now for if else, we can add multiple branches. There will always be a branch called else saying, what do you want it to do if there's no other option? We'll start with that one. It's the easy. If it is other, if it is not operations or finance, we just want it to end. So we can go ahead and connect that. That is super easy. Now, again, we've got the JSON. I've already had this produced by ChatGPT just to help speed this up a little bit. All right, so this is what ChatGPT gave me. We're going to do the input, output put parse domain equals operations. We're going to add another one. And here is that for finance. 
and then we are good to go. So now we've got our three conditions. You'll see we have a condition for operations, a condition for finance, and then a condition for all else. So all else is ending because there's really nothing we can do with that. Now we're gonna add in our agents for finance and operation. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. So let's go ahead and add in our two agents and then we'll get them set up. So there's our first agent. Here's our second agent, and now the two processes are going to run separately and with separate data depending on what they've received. All right, so there's our agents, and let's go ahead and start with the operations agent. So for setting up our operations agent, we want the reasoning effort to be medium because this one's really going to think. For our instructions, we need to create something that will translate our natural language into something that can analyze the data that we're going to provide in the next AI agent because the natural language isn't going to know exactly what the column availabilities are, what the data types are, so we need to help define that. And there's a really easy way you can do this if we go back to ChatGPT. Now, don't worry about scribbling down all these prompts I'm giving you. I'm going to include them down in the description, so make sure to check that out. And for right now, you can just focus on what we're doing and why we're doing it. So I need your help writing instructions for an AI agent inside OpenAI Agent Builder. I need this agent to translate natural language into domain-specific query language. This needs to be translated into a query that executes using only what is in a YAML ontology that you will define. So, YAML and ontology, those are big fancy terms you don't need to worry too much about. It's a natural way of speaking to AI tools so they can understand how data is organized. It's basically a Dewey Decimal System like in a library for AI tools. Now, you can go again if you have any interest in learning these, let me know down in the comments. I'll do future videos exactly on these two topics. But for now, know that ChatGPT can help you write all of that. So now there's two things we need to do. First, we need to say this domain is about operational data analysis. So we'll add that into customize. And then we need to pull in some of our data. So here is the data set we have. This is our point of sale data set for a coffee shop. There's a really cool thing you can do with the AI tools. You can just copy in the first couple rows of data. They'll get the general idea of what you're trying to show. And then you can just paste it in and it will be able to build that Dewey Decimal System, that ontology for you. So we'll go ahead and send this away and we'll see what we get back. All right, so it's coming back. It's giving us our agent instructions again. It's confirming that it understands what we're asking for. And this is going to be what we copy and paste into the tool. So you see, here's the job we're giving it. Here's the ontology, the data, the way it's laid out. And it's showing you know, integer dimensions. It's telling you exactly what it is. It's saying how you need to put it, what the target query needs to be. And then it's giving rules, mapping rules, syntax taxes, so all the stuff that the AI agent needs to understand. And again, you did all of this without writing a single line of code. Yes, you're going to copy and paste some code in, but ChatGPT handled all of this for you. And again, who's better for creating an open AI AI agent than ChatGPT? So let's go ahead and copy all of this in. We can start right after the title of agent instructions. We'll paste this in all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to put this in as our instruction. All right, so there's our operations agent. Now we're going to come set a finance agent. All right, again, we're going to give this a medium reasoning effort. And we're going to come back and do the same thing with instruction. OK, so here's the same prompt we had before. We'll say again, this domain is about financial data. And then we're going to go to our general ledger data for this coffee shop. And we'll give it the first couple of rows again. I like to make sure I get it a little bit different for each location, so make sure we grab a few different things. We'll come back, we'll paste this in, and we'll let ChatGPT do its magic. All right, ChatGPT is already coming back. We're getting exactly what we got before. Now it's just customized for financial reporting data set instead of being customized for operation. So while it finishes, we'll start going down to copy all of this in. All right, so there is all of our instructions for this agent. We will paste that. And now we've got the agents that are going to build the query language. Now, the last agents are going to be the actual agents that analyze the data. So let's go ahead and pop those two in. It's going to be the same node, this agent node right here. So let's go ahead and connect our operations agent there. And then this first agent is going to be operations analysis. All right, this one we want to give medium effort again to make sure it does some reasoning because it's going to be analyzing data. Now, the instructions for this are going to be really easy because we're going to give it a tool, and I'll show you that in a moment. So the instructions are going to be really easy. We're just going to say your role is to analyze the prompt you have received because you already had an AI agent create the prompt knowing how to query using the tools given to you. Now, here's the tools, and here's where this gets really neat. So in the last step, you saw us use ChatGPT to write the code and the ontology to understand the data. But now this AI agent 
agent by itself is going to generate Python code to analyze the data. So you don't have to ask ChatGPT anything here because this is a ChatGPT agent and it's going to do all that work for you just like we saw before, but without you having to prompt. So come down to this plus sign, hit tools, and we want to add a code interpreter. Now you might be thinking, well, why am I not using file search? File search is really a lot more for things like PDFs, Word documents when the data is text. Code interpreter actually allows you to analyze data and it's the only way to pull in Excel or CSV files because you can't do that through file search. So we're going to use code interpreter, which means this AI agent will write Python on, analyze the file we give it. So now we're going to use the same files that we had for our last step when we built the entomology. We'll go ahead and add that file and then we're going to do all of this over again and we're going to come down here and add another agent which is going to be our financial analysis. All right, we're going to paste in the same instructions. Your role is to analyze the prompt you've received using the tools given to you. Make sure we connect those two together and then add reasoning effort to medium and we'll put our tool in Go ahead and pop that in and that's it. We've built an agent. The last thing left to do is to test it. So now we've got our workflow built and the last thing to do is test it. So let's go ahead and hit the run button. It's going to come up to test our agent so we can prompt it just like we're the user. Let's go ahead and say which location was the most profitable. Profitable should be a keyword for going to financial analysis. Which location was the most profitable so far in 2023? I'm clarifying it's 2023 because that's when the data set's from. I don't want it to try to analyze right now and come back and say I don't have any data. So just making sure you kind of understand that you're giving it. Let's go ahead and send that off and see what happens. All right, it's running the guardrails. It passed the guardrails. It selected finance as the domain. It interpreted this as a financial question. It's running the finance agent. All right, it's saying I need to understand what's most profitable. So it's deciding how it needs to write the query. Right now it's writing the query to give to the data analysis agent. Again, think if this was ChatGPT, we would have to be kind of prompting, getting a response, prompting, getting a response. It's doing all of that for us right now. Now it's moved on from the finance agent to the financial analysis agent, and it's actually using Python to do the analysis. We should start seeing Python pop up shortly. Let's see how that looks. All right, and here comes the Python code. If you're familiar with Python at all, you'll see it's pulling in a lot of different tools it needs, and it is full on running Python code to complete this analysis. It just keeps going, reasoning as it goes, it's running the Python code as it goes. Okay, you'll see it's getting ready to craft the response back to the user, and here is the answer you would get if you were the user. So if you were the actual user, it's showing us all the steps because we built it. If you're the actual user, the only thing you're going to get back is this clean answer. You're not going to see all this other noise. That's us for testing purposes. You're going to get this clean answer saying Astoria has the highest net profit, which is revenue minus cost of sales, labor, marketing, rent, utilities. Mind you, we didn't define any of that. The AI tools have handled all that analysis with context and instructions we've given it. How cool is this? Just imagine all the different areas you can build this. Just do a fun exercise, scroll through your email inbox and see what kind of questions you get over and over again. Then practice building an agent the way we just did with ChatGPT creating all of the context and instructions you need and the AI agent running against some of your data and see if you can get kind of where you get that bulk of questions for it to answer the first pass. Just think about how much time this could save you and how easy this was with really this kind of drag and drop logic and ChatGPT supporting us every step of the way. And don't forget, if you want to come up with ideas for how you can use OpenAI's agent builder to solve some of your workflow issues and to save you time, you can just ask ChatGPT and it will give you ideas for the specific problems you're facing. How cool is this? Have fun playing around. Again, there's no better way to learn than to practice. Have fun playing around in here. Promise you can't break anything. Just make sure to save copies of what you're doing and go to town. If you've enjoyed this video on OpenAI's Agent Builder, I highly encourage you to check out my video on agent mode in Excel. Sometimes you just want to stay right in Excel, the tool you know and love. And agent mode brings a lot of the capabilities you saw here right into Excel. I'm going to post the link to that video right here. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, don't miss agent mode in Excel. It will truly blow your mind. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.